Blog Talk Radio. I'm going to a city that's set on a hill. Its ruler and maker is the Lord God above. Oh, I'm going to a city and it's set on a hill. And someday I'll be in heaven and there'll be no sorrow there. Oh, I'm going to a city it lies four square. The gates are made. Hello, everybody. God bless you today. This is Susan Puzio, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic News Radio broadcast on Blog Talk Radio. And we also have a website, propheticnews.com. We have a YouTube channel, Prophetic News TV. And uh, we want to proclaim the wonderful, glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, And, you know, the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So (laughs) we truly want God to bless us. And we try every day to keep our heart pure and to be pleasing to God so we can accomplish our mission on the earth. Amen. Um, We we see truly the days are evil. There was a terrible disaster in Colorado, and uh, many people were killed, many people were injured, Um, truly a a demonic act, and uh, imagine going to watch a movie and someone starts shooting at you. I I just can't imagine it, and I never want to. be in that situation it, it's really really awful and uh, we must remember the people that were injured in our prayers and uh, also pray for this young man that's so possessed of the devil that he would want to hurt innocent people that never did anything to him so uh, we know as Christians that our life is an example to other people and we want to try to do our best to be a good testimony to uh, an unsaved world to our unsaved family members and we see today and uh, what we're going to talk about today is Paul Crouch Jr. who is the son of Jan and Paul Crouch of TBN, the founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, and also we will have uh, an open letter to Randy White, who is the pastor of Without Walls Church in Tampa, Florida, and uh, these are some of the things that have been on my heart for these two men. Uh, I, I hope, and I will email this program to both of them. And uh, hopefully they'll listen because a deceived person does not know they're deceived. (laughs) That's what deception is, is that when you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. So uh, that's why uh, God puts people in the body of Christ, friends. Uh, The Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. So I'd rather have somebody rebuke me openly than to love me in secret and not tell me. Uh, that uh, I messed up, and uh, maybe I might not receive it at first. Uh, Isn't it funny that uh, human beings, even though they're saved, they still have a rebellious nature, and they don't like to be told what to do? But maybe somebody can see something you can't see, and it can help you, because when you see... The situation, especially with Paul Crouch Jr., who's he's not he's no longer with TBN, and uh, Randy White, uh, how their lives divorce, and uh, in Randy White's case, becoming addicted to prescription drugs, uh, allegedly attempting suicide, and uh, why arrested for drunk driving? Now why? would 
a born-again believer want to wind up back in the pig pen? Look, we've all been there before we were saved. We know what the what the slop bucket was like. <laughs> Remember? Uh, I don't want to go back there. Um, I can't understand why they want to go back there. I wonder, sometimes I really do wonder if either of these men have ever truly been born again. And uh, because the way they operate their ministries, the way they abuse the people of God, the um, outright merchandising of the gospel and taking what's precious, uh, to me, I don't understand how anybody could do it because when you have, when you're really born again, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and He does bring correction. So, if you're born again and you you've stopped hearing from God, then there definitely is a problem in your life. If you continue to uh, do the things that you're doing, there's a high price. Uh, to be paid personally, and uh, we don't wish these people any harm. Uh, I wish the best for them. I, I I would like to see them turn their lives around and totally sell out to uh, Jesus Christ and his gospel, and uh, for both of them to preach the true gospel, not uh, the prosperity gospel um, that doesn't really help people. All of us need blessings from God. All of us need our needs to be met from the Lord. But we can't manipulate people and uh, use witchcraft to get these blessings. The, those kind of things don't work. Uh, I found an interesting scripture this morning. I didn't even know this scripture was in the Bible, but it's amazing how God opens your eyes to things. And if you look in Numbers 22, verse 7, it says, And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. Now, I find that interesting, that verse there, the rewards of divination, because I see both Paul Crouch, Jr., and Randy White practicing divination and the rewards of divination. What what looks like success and financial success in the natural is nothing but the reward of divination, how they've managed to manipulate people to uh, give them money. And uh, they, they don't use faith to believe God. Uh, to bring in money for networks and church projects and things. No, they constantly beat people over the head with promises of financial blessings for seed sowing. And uh, none of that is scripture. It's manipulation. It's witchcraft. And um, it's not anything that a minister of the gospel, and we're all called to be ministers of the gospel. Every believer is called to the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling lost sinners unto Jesus Christ. So it doesn't make Paul Crouch Jr. special. It doesn't make Randy White, who likes to call himself a bishop. And Randy, you're only Randy. Uh, the Bible says in Philippians that Jesus Christ himself made of himself no reputation. So why do we want to make a reputation for ourselves? Why do we want to put a title before our name? And uh, instead of um, humbling ourselves and just being ourselves, we want to put a title before our name so that uh, it, it immediately separates you from the people in your congregation and the people that you're trying to minister to because they have to call you by your title which, okay, if you earned a doctorate and whatever, yeah, okay, then you are a doctor. And uh, But there's no such title as reverend. Um, the only reverend that I know about is God. I don't know any other reverends out there. Uh, so that's pride if you demand that somebody calls you by a title. You don't deserve any more respect than anyone sitting in the congregation. 
or anyone um, that's uh, watching your television ministry. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's time to come back down to earth and just be yourself. And uh, I, I think that once you come out of the fog and you realize that without God in our life, without Jesus Christ in our life, we truly would be nothing. We came from nothing. We came from dust, and, and we're going to be dust again. And if it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? So let's lift him up and, and uh, drop all the pretense. And, uh, you know, if you want to go to church and, and, and the guy standing up there preaching demands that you call him Pastor Ray or whatever, and, and he won't let you call him by his name, then there's something wrong with that guy. Uh, I don't get it. I don't... Um, I don't understand that kind of thing, really, because uh, I'm only Susan, and uh, God gave me a Bible. He allows me to quote it, so <laughs> that doesn't make me anything special. It doesn't make Randy White anything special. It doesn't make Paul Crouch Jr. anything special. Um, we have a book. Everybody can read it, so we praise God for that, but... I want to remind you all that uh, it is a live call-in program, and the call-in number is 914-338-1638. So if you have any comments or questions, please call in, and uh, would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, I see Brother Vincent in the chat room. Hi, Brother Vincent. Uh, been enjoying some of your programs this week, the holiday specials. God bless you and uh, the other people that have joined in the chat room. Thank you very much for uh, coming by. But, um, you know, we don't do these programs because we hate people or because uh, we have anything against any of these people. We just realize that when you're standing before a lost and dying world and you're preaching something that you call the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then let it be that. Don't, um, you, you know, you might do some things in private that don't glorify God, but when you, when you have a public pulpit, a television ministry, a radio ministry, then uh, try to conduct yourself in a matter that's pleasing and glorifies God, because it is a testimony. There are people listening to us, and um, we have to be careful what we say and what we do. Um, these programs are archived, and they're out there for anybody in the world to listen to, so we want to make sure that we give uh, <laughs> glory to God with our conversation and uh, with the things that we say and do so. Amen, Brother Vincent. We have made gods, and that's what's happened. Uh, people have put these ministers up on a pedestal, and um, people have made idols out of preachers, and it, and it is a very, very dangerous thing to do. The uh, Bible warns us not to make idols out of human beings, not to worship other gods, but uh, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, I find it uh, interesting now, the situation with Paul Crouch Jr. And, um, of course, he was managing uh, TBN, and you would see him very, very, almost every night you would see him there. And... Of course, he did divorce his wife. Um, I don't know if he has two or three children. And uh, his daughter, Brittany Coper, is uh, suing some of the attorneys, the TBN attorneys. Um, we need to remember her in our prayers because uh, truly I believe that, you know, she's a target and she's trying to expose the corruption and she's, taken a stand for righteousness and I really do admire this young lady because I would like to see her father do the same thing Paul Crouch Jr. Uh, not to worry about your inheritance uh, 
not to worry about uh, a job, um, but to take a stand for the gospel no matter what it costs because Paul Crouch Jr., after he left TVN, I don't know if he was fired or he left on his own, uh, he went over and took a job with the Word Network. Now, I call it the Unword Network because they have every kind of heretic and false prophet, false teacher on that network. Unbelievable. Uh, the kind of people that they allow to broadcast there. So I wonder, is the Word Network really a Christian network? Well, I don't think so. So I, don't, I can't imagine why Paul Crouch Jr. would want to go there and take a job and then promote uh, people that are into witchcraft, uh, people that are preaching a false gospel. Why do you take a job like that? I don't get it. Uh, you don't really need the money. Uh, he could work anywhere with his knowledge of television and... Um, he really does have quite a bit of information to give. He could start his own network. Um, there's so many things he could do. He's already left TBN. Apparently, he's he's no longer uh, going to receive the inheritance of the network because uh, uh, of what is happening with his daughter following the lawsuit and the revelations that have come out. So. Yeah, <laughs> jumping into the frying pan, yeah, from the frying pan into fire. Well, if Paul Crouch Jr. was really saved, then uh, I would think that he would say, look, I'm not going to compromise any longer. I'm not going to do the things that I did when I was at TBN. When I was at TBN, I had to compromise to keep my job and to keep my inheritance, to inherit this billion-dollar network and uh, which we see is starting to crumble, and um, it will crumble unless they repent. It, it truly will. We saw, some of us with our own eyes back in the 80s, we saw the PTL network completely crumble. Um, we saw the buildings abandoned, and now you can go on the Internet and see the pictures of the old PTL ministry where the buildings are, are just totally derelict, most of them, and um, when God judges something, then it's over. Unless you repent and you turn from your wicked ways, uh, there's no hope, really, because God is not going to allow somebody that claims to be saved and somebody that is um, promoting a false gospel. He just he'll, He's very merciful for a while, but then... I, Personally, I don't want to be judged by God publicly. No, I would rather judge myself and have my friends judge me than to have to be judged by God and have to pay such a terrible price. Uh, we saw Jim Baker go to jail, to prison. We saw Jimmy Baker, I mean, um, Jimmy Swagger, uh, turning to prostitutes. So um, remember what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to uh, lose his mind and uh, he was crawling on the ground like an animal because he wouldn't obey God and we see uh, so many of these preachers are losing their mind. Now why are they losing their mind? Because they're disobeying God and uh, God will allow these things to happen. It's not pleasant, it's not pretty. It hurts. It, it hurts their families. It hurts the people uh, that watch them, that listen to them. It's very, very destructive. So um, I, I wonder, Paul Crouch Jr., why do you leave TBN and you go over to the Word Network and you hold a telethon that it was an abomination? You bring in every false teacher uh, you just go right from TBN right over to the Word Network and just keep repeating what you did there and continuing to manipulate people to bring in finances. You don't, you don't have to tell anybody what you need. Uh, I don't have anything against 
taking up an offering. I, I have nothing against that if people want to do that. That's okay. But why do you have to manipulate people? Why do you have to tell people that if they give you money, um, that God is going to bless them back with jobs and salvation for their families and healing for their bodies? And um, We don't have to do anything to get God to bless us except to ask him. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. And so why do you manipulate people and use witchcraft to get people to support your ministry? If it really was a ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have to manipulate anybody. You wouldn't even have to tell anybody what you need because God himself says he knows what you need even before you ask. So the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Uh, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to stand up on television and have telethons and uh, hour after hour of begging people for money and promising them selling indulgences and uh, selling salvation and selling miracles and doing all of that and, and acting like that's Christian. Well, there's nothing Christian about it. I, I can't understand why more and more Christians just don't get upset about it and get up in arms about it and just leave these places, these so-called churches and these so-called ministries, just leave them behind and just tell them, look, if you're not going to preach the gospel, I am not going to support you. And if you're not going to learn how to live by faith, then don't tell me about faith because you don't have any yourself. And they don't. They don't have an ounce of faith to believe God uh, to uh, meet their needs and support their ministries. Trust me, the, the airtime at uh, Word Network is probably very, very expensive. They broadcast 24 hours a day, and most of those time slots are filled. So they're making millions of dollars on airtime. Uh, I just want to give you a little education about the value of selling airtime on a network. Now, I myself, uh, back in the 80s, was involved in uh, a project of trying to put Christian television uh, in Aspen, Colorado, and uh, we were going to sell the airtime for $50 an hour. Now, we figured that maybe we would um, broadcast for 20 hours a day, so if you have $50 an hour, and uh, you have 20 hours a day, that's $1,000. And then if you have 30 days in a month, that's $30,000 in a month you make, that's $360,000 in a year, and that's just for selling airtime at $50 an hour. Now. The last I heard, TBN, they were selling airtime for $5,000 an hour. So you could imagine how many millions of dollars they're making on airtime. So they don't ever have to really do a telethon. Uh, it's the same thing with the Word Network. I imagine that they are um, <laughs> taking in uh, multiple millions of dollars in uh, – Airtime, so why, are, why was Paul Crouch Jr. all of a sudden, that was the first telethon I ever saw on the Word Network. And why are they having a telethon? Uh, I, couldn't, I, I can't get it. <laughs> yeah, $5,000 an hour, right, for airtime. Right, $5,000. So who can afford, how can anybody possibly afford, most people that have a ministry can't possibly afford uh, $5,000 an hour for airtime. So what happens is most of these people just start pimping themselves. They just prostitute the gospel and sell it. And uh, then they get the money for their so-called ministries, which you know, I have this to say. If you can't repent and you can't preach the truth and you need to just go away for a while uh, take another job, go to work at Walmart or uh, somewhere like that, just earn an honest living, and then when you can come back 
and preach the gospel out of a pure heart, then please come back and uh, we'll listen to you. But if you're not going to do it, if you're going to continue with this dog and pony show, please just go away. Just go away and stop deceiving people. I don't, I don't know how these people sleep at night. Truly, I would find it very difficult uh, because when I do something wrong, I am convicted about it. And even when I lay my head down on my pillow, I am convicted about it. And I know that I have to do something to make it right. So um, I don't get it if these people are saved. Why? They're not being convicted. So uh, let's take a look at Randy White. Now, Randy White, he was married to Paula White. Now they're divorced. And uh, they started a, a ministry in um, Tampa, Florida, a church called Without Walls. I'm not sure when they came to Tampa. I don't know if it's in the uh, if it was in 1990s or when, but they had a, a fairly small ministry when they first came, and uh, then they started coming over to the. There's a Christian television station in Clearwater, Florida, and they started going over there, and they were bringing them big seed faith gifts, and they were having these big uh, uh, on the programs. They would be you know blowing the trumpet with the uh, president of the network that here we are and we're bringing you uh, $10,000, an offering of $10,000. Well, doesn't the Bible say that we're supposed to give our alms in secret? So, like, why are you bragging about it? Oh, dear. You know, you, you know like they have those testimonies at church of I tithed and I sowed my seed and look, I've got a big house and I've got a big car and look at all the blessings I have. <laughs> and that's not scriptural. The Bible says you're supposed to give your alms in secret, and, and then God will reward you openly. So uh, that's nothing but manipulation. So you could say, wow, look, he got a house, and he got a car, and look at all the blessings he ha he got because he gave Randy White money, and he gave uh, uh, Paul Crouch Jr. money, and so God blessed him. Well... <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, um, Randy White, they, they started this church, and uh, they had a television ministry. And then, uh, I don't know, they started getting into all this weird, bringing in these weird preachers. Uh, one of them, uh, Manasseh Jordan, and <laughs> these people are bad news. I mean, if you ever go to... Uh, look at the website of uh, Manasseh Jordan. I don't know if he still has it, but he, uh, the company of the prophets, and it's some kind of a P-O-M-E ministry, and uh, it's nothing but uh, divination. And they bring this guy, Randy brings this guy into his congregation uh, to, and I put it in quotes, minister, to the people in his congregation. Now, what pastor brings a false prophet into their church to minister to their congregation? Uh, that's very, very strange when that started happening. And they also had a, bought a building in Lakeland, Florida, which seats 10,000 people. It's a 65-acre piece of property. It's a beautiful piece of property, or it was a beautiful piece of property. But the electricity was turned off in September of 2011, and it's still not turned back on because they couldn't pay their electric bill. So now this is another question I have for Randy White is, you claim that if you tithe and you sow seeds that God is obligated to bless you and you will prosper if you do these things. Well, if it really worked, then why isn't it working for you? Why is your building in Lakeland, Florida closed up? It's boarded up because people have been breaking into it and uh, breaking the windows and breaking the doors. The electricity has been turned off. 
it, it's this is the uh, state of Florida where we have 90 degrees uh, just about every day in the summer. There's no air conditioning in that building. Uh, there was no heat in the winter. The pipes probably froze. Uh, the place is a mess. I want to know why, you know, if that was my building, uh, when I, when I had called over to the ministry to tell them that their building was being vandalized, a friend of mine lived in Lakeland, and she went by, and she saw the damage that was done. And I had called uh, Without Walls and spoke to Randy's father to tell him. I had to be the one to call them and tell them that their building was being vandalized. They didn't know it, or they pretended they didn't know it. And... Uh, I, then I was told that they could not afford a security guard. Now, if that was my building, if that was my $10 million piece of property, you better know that I would sell my car, I would sell my furniture, I would, I would sell my house, and I would get myself, or I would go down there myself because Tampa is not that far from Lakeland. If I was Randy or Paula, I would have gone down there myself at night to watch my property so it wouldn't be vandalized. Now, there's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage that has been done to that property because they would not hire a security guard. I was told that uh, they did not have enough money to hire a security guard to go there and watch their property. So now Randy wants to come back on TV or on the uh, you know, he's back pastoring the church in Tampa and claiming that they're going to reopen Lakeland. And uh, he's trying to raise $300,000 to retire his debt. And But that's not including the mortgages that he has on the property. But do you know what he's, he's planning to do now is he's going to build a new... <laughs> He's telling the people he's going to build a new building in uh, Tampa. They're, they're going to build a new sanctuary. They're going to make it better. When Go on the Internet, and uh, I've got some videos on my channel, Prophetic News TV, and you can, ask, you can see the condition of his property in Lakeland, how they left it uh, abandoned without the electricity being on uh, because God wrote Ichabod on the place, and uh, Ichabod means the glory has departed. Well, truly the glory has departed uh, from that ministry. So what, what does Randy do? And Randy, I'm wondering why, after all you've been through, and you have been through a lot, yes, you really have, but why do you get up there on Sunday morning at your church and you take up four offerings? Four. And it's nothing but a... But a parade of bringing people up. They're making them come up so that they feel intimidated if they don't come up by the other people sitting uh, in the congregation. Uh, making them march up to the front with their offering so everybody can see that they're giving an offering. And then telling them, bringing in false teachers like Dana Muldoon. I mean, Dana Muldoon is a New Age prophetess. She is into the New Age. If you watch her on TV, uh, or you can see some of her videos on uh, the Internet, she will sell you a stone that you could rub. And, and if you rub this stone, then uh, somehow God's going to answer your prayers. Now, does that sound like the gospel? I don't think so. That doesn't sound like the gospel to me. Why do you bring in Dana Muldoon for the past few weeks to so-called minister to the people in your congregation, lay hands on people there, uh, something's wrong. Something is really wrong. And I just hope and pray that you will listen to some people that really do care about you and get into that Bible that you're carrying and read it and see what it says because it doesn't say any of that. It doesn't say to do any of that. Uh, my Bible says, well, you can sell everything you have, and God will still bless you. You can give everything you have, and God will still bless you. But God doesn't owe you anything. He does not 
owe you anything. So uh, I see some of the uh, people in the chat room. Um, Songbird uh, says that they have a cash cow to fix, whatever, whenever. So they aren't concerned about million dollar buildings falling down. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, I'm like, I heard that uh, Randy was coming back to uh, Tampa, and uh, I've tuned in a few Sundays on uh, the internet just to see, just to hear what he has to say because I'm not interested in hearing his preaching at the moment, but just to see what he's doing, just to see if he really changed after everything he been th he's been through. He was arrested for drunk driving. He was addicted to drugs. He had to go to rehab. He had to have psychiatric care. He got a divorce. Uh, he's in, in in debt up to his eyeballs. And so I'm wondering, you know, did he really change? Maybe he really changed, but he didn't. No, he has not changed at all. He's... Uh, still manipulating people, um, still doing the same old thing, and it's not going to work. Uh, it's just not going to work. So, <laughs> you know, once the judgment of God falls and uh, you don't turn, I don't care what you do, if you don't repent and try to get things right, it's not going to work. No matter how many offerings you take up, no matter how many celebrities you bring over there, it's just not going to work. It's going to fall apart. And uh, I hope and I pray that he'll turn around and uh, don't bring in another preacher. You don't need any of those preachers. Uh, one Sunday he brought some guy, and I swear he, he looked like and acted like a used car salesman. He brings this guy, supposedly pastor somebody, uh, from Orlando who had a anointing for finances. He had a prosperity anointing. Like, uh, I don't know. Do, can anybody there, is anybody in the chat room, can you tell me, did you ever hear of anybody having a, <laughs> a prosperity anointing? I mean, come on. <laughs> like, what? And the people, I don't know how many people were sitting in the congregation. They were all buying it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, maybe some of them got up and walked out. I hope so. But uh, I, I wonder why, why, did it not, why did not one person in that congregation stand up and say, that's not true, there is no such thing as a prosperity anointing. What was the pro so what was the prosperity anointing that this so, like used car salesman pastor had? was to get up there and to tell him, I don't know what kind of anointing he was selling. It was some kind of a now anointing or get your now anointing or your something. And uh, it will only cost you uh, $500 or a $1,000 seed. Uh, in order to get this anointing, you had to come up with some money. And that's how you got it. So uh, that wasn't a, a prosperity anointing. Uh, Randy, that guy had no prosperity anointing. All it was was manipulation. It was manipulation and it was witchcraft. And it's not going to work. That's not going to work. You're going to have nightmares. Uh, I don't know. I, I There was, um, <laughs> yeah, never heard of a prosperity anointing. <laughs> I'll tell you what the prosperity anointing is. It's get a job. Uh, get a good job, work, work a, an honest job, and uh, you'll have a prosperity anointing. Uh, you don't have to go to without walls and sow seeds. If you go to, um, there's a story in the Lakeland Ledger, and it's ledger.com. Uh, they posted a story there about Bishop... Now, Randy likes to call himself a bishop, but Randy, you're only Randy. Bishop wants to revive the vacated Without Walls Church. So um, Randy says, now I'm quoting him in this article, I think it's an indictment against the body of Christ to let that building go as it's going. <laughs> now, hey, he's blaming the body of Christ that that building 
was left there to go to be uh, left there to go derelict. Now, yeah, he's he's actually blaming the body of Christ. No, Randy, no. It, but then he says, "I take full responsibility." Yeah, well, I'm wondering why you or your son or or some of your buddies over there at the church couldn't go down there and uh, act as a security guard uh, for your property. I, that I don't get at all. Uh, I'm wondering, like. What were you thinking? Uh, that doesn't sound to me like a person, like you and Paula were in your right mind when uh, you supposedly Paula drives a Mercedes. And why didn't she sell her Mercedes and hire a security guard? Now, there was someone here that wrote a letter. Uh, if, you, if you scroll down, if you go to theledger.com and you scroll down, there's some people there that actually... Uh, were members of the church. Now, one lady says, don't hate, celebrate. So, in other words, like what I'm doing today, or if anybody makes a comment that doesn't agree with Randy White, you're a hater. Well, it, it's not hate. No, it's not hate. And sooner, And trust me, soon it's going to be a hate crime for us to have programs like this and to post things on the, on the Internet. Yeah, it will be a, a hate crime. But there's someone here named Orlando Velez, and he says, I was a member, and I am happy that he is trying to straighten his life out. But Paula, who still owns a 10000 who still gets a $10,000 allowance that pays for a house that is big enough for six full families, drives a Mercedes, and can surely pay for another remodel, so that having a building to rob the needy the whites are trying to affect Scott Thomas. Well, forget it, because Scott Thomas is nothing but a sellout, too. So, uh, anyway, that, there's some comments there that I find interesting by people. So, I mean, if, if I couldn't pay my electric bill and, and, my, and people were breaking into my church, and there's hundreds of uh, broken windows on the buildings there, um, we have the photographic evidence, and you can see it. But uh, I would sell everything I own to take care of my property and, and to protect what uh, God gave me. So I don't understand why people still follow these people, why they still listen to them. Uh, you need to run for your life. Either Randy repents and starts preaching the true gospel and Paula, or you, you just need to leave you just need to leave and uh, tell them why. You don't even have to tell them why you're leaving, but you can tell them. Hopefully, they'll listen. What What happened when uh, I posted some videos on YouTube? Paula uh, had my channel shut down uh, and accused me a false accusation of uh, copyright infringement, which I did not infringe on anybody's copyrights. And uh, there is such a thing in the law as fair use. You are allowed to use copyrighted materials when you're reporting on something. And uh, so what do they do if they don't like you? They try to shut you down. Uh, they accuse you of uh, false accusations against you. And uh, we're not doing these programs to hurt Paula or to hurt Randy because they're doing a pretty good job hurting themselves. And... Uh, I call on Randy White and Paul Crouch Jr. today to truly repent and stop making a circus out of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, to bring back integrity and humility. And I would like to see that happen in your life and for God to truly change you and for you to have an impact on the world that you can have. Not the impact that you're having currently. is to, It's a mockery what you're doing. So we pray for these people to repent and uh, to turn their life over to Jesus Christ and to be truly born again um, because there's no salvation. Yeah, they need to shut me down. Wow, that is so Christian. That's true, uh, Vincent. Uh, I wondered that myself. Like, why were they trying, why did they try to shut me down? That wasn't Christian. It was cowardly. Why didn't they call me or email me? My email address is on the Internet. They could have emailed me. I called their church and tried to talk to them. 
uh, won't talk to you. So uh, I'm not trying to hide anything. Uh, I'm willing to go public with my statements. And uh, so they're invited to email me, susan at propheticnews.com. And I will speak to them personally. That's fine. But I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in today. I want to thank all the people that were in the chat room and uh, all the listeners. And uh, I ask you to join me. Uh, email these people. Call them. And uh, let your concerns be made known, too, uh, because they can have an effect, a po very positive effect for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they don't need to be doing what they're doing. <laughs> you know, it really is a shame. And um, we want to try to uh, <laughs> do it right. So anyway, God bless everybody that tuned in. And uh, tune in next week, okay? Remember, if you don't know Jesus Christ today, you can know him in a real way because he is real. He is a real person, and he really does love you. Give your life to Jesus. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So repent of your sins today and ask Jesus to change your life. He'll give you peace and joy something that you can't buy. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy anything from God. It's a free gift. Everything from God is a free gift for the asking. I know what it is to be born again. I was born again 30, over 30 years ago, and my life was so messed up. I lived a really dumb, stupid life for 30 years of my life. And then Jesus Christ came into my life, and he changed me. And it was so beautiful. <laughs> I found what I was looking for. I didn't have to search anymore because I, I found the truth. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And um, he does really, really love you, no matter what you've done. And it's, it's true. No matter what you've done, he will forgive you and give you a brand new life. You don't have to live in condemnation and guilt. He can take all that away and make everything new. So just ask him today to reveal himself to you. And uh, get your Bible out and read the third chapter of John and the Gospels of John. And you can see where Jesus said that you must be born again. Once you're born of your mother, and then you must be born of the Spirit of God. And it is a, it is a real experience. I can testify to that. So God bless you all today. And tune in again next week, okay? Bye-bye. I'm going to a city that's set on a hill Its ruler and maker is the Lord God above Oh, I'm going to a city And it's set on a hill And someday I'll be in heaven And there'll be no sorrow there Oh, I'm going to a city It lies four square The gates are made of jasper And I'll see Jesus there I'm going to a city and it's set on a hill And someday I'll be in heaven And there'll be no sorrow there
day I'll be in heaven and there'll be no sorrow there.